It's been a roller coaster year for all Jersey Shore municipalities for a lot of different reasons, mainly because of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Hello again, everybody. I'm Vin Ebenu here for the fifth episode of Town Square Media Jersey Shore's Ask the Mayor, which brings me to Tom's River Town Hall today with Mayor Maurice Mo Hill to discuss some current events going on in Tom's River, his first year as mayor in Tom's River, the effects of COVID-19, a different kind of Halloween, and and a little bit more. Mayor, thank you for having me here in Town Hall. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. So, I mean, certainly when you ran last year from the council to the mayor's spot, when you won election, you didn't think you'd have to deal anything with a pandemic. And then all of a sudden, here it comes third month of the year. And you're trying to figure out, well, okay, well, what's opening? What's got to close? What's going to happen with the schools, uh, with, with your own staff in Town Hall and everything? So, Tell me how, how this journey has kind of been, you know, here as we head towards November, almost a year in, what the pandemic has done to Tom's River. It's been a challenging year. Uh, from the municipal standpoint, we, you know, we were shut down for, uh, you know, two months. Uh, we were able to uh, furlough some employees that uh, minimized the impact on the budget. Um, where the, the employers were able to file for unemployment, and with the extra six hundred dollars, it, it mitigated any any loss of income that they might have experienced. So that that worked out, and uh, you know it was an involuntary furlough. We worked with the unions a little bit, and uh, they waived the forty five day period, and uh, and people opted for the uh, you know for the uh, for the furlough. Uh, that was number one. Number mm -hmm. two was the was the economic impact on our town. Uh, most notably, uh, you know, we had the big box stores were still open, but the small retail stores and restaurants were closed, and that really hurt. Um, the restaurants were shut for almost three months. Uh, they were allowed to open for outdoor dining, I believe, in June. Mm -hmm. Again, that's weather dependent, so if it rains, you're, you're out of luck. Right. Um, right. Originally, the governor had said he would open July 4th weekend. A lot of our restaurants are now pre-ordered food. As you know, we're a shore community, so we depend heavily on tourism, and that's the busy time of the year, you know, June through September, um, and we lost two months, um, June, uh, July, and August. Uh, and then going into Labor Day, they allowed us to have 25% indoor seating. Uh, the town and the bid and the county worked together uh, to do downtown dining on Friday and Saturday night, which has been a huge success. Yes, uh, yes. It's, it's worked out <laughs> it very well. It great every Friday night. <laughs> the county allowed us to block off from Main Street to um, out to Robbins mm -hmm. and barricade it off, and the, re the restaurateurs put out tables. Um, they've gotten innovative with pop tents for the, if the weather wasn't cooperative. I know we were downtown the day when it rained, and we had a pop-up tent, and we put it out, and we were able to continue <laughs> eating. But they've done very well. And, uh, and again, that was a cooperation between our engineering department that fast-tracked the applications and the permits, uh, the county for allowing us to close down a county road, our police department for manning the barricades, uh, and also the bid worked in cooperation with us, too. So, um, yeah, it was very helpful. Uh, going forward, it's just uh, it, it's frustrating. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in the susceptible population, over 65. I tell everybody I'm in the fourth quarter of my life. I, <laughs> I don't like this sitting on the sidelines <laughs> or sitting on a bench. I did enough of that three years at Rutgers. So I sat on the bench. I hated it. I said I'd never do it again in my life. Yeah, and yeah, up until <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to be in the game. So uh, up until this point, well, I've been in the game. Right. You know, I was right. in the Navy. I was a councilman. I'm the mayor. Uh, you know, I've worked uh, both country and community and, uh, and been engaged. Uh, but, you know, it, it feels difficult. It mm. feels very different. Um, you know, with the children not in school, although Tom River's going back. Uh, my, my fourth grade granddaughter just started yesterday. She had her first day of school. Nice, so I nice. drove her. Here we are, you know, end of October, and I'm taking the first day photo. Um, but it, it's, it's difficult. The, the high school level... Uh, I think the, the remote education seems to work better. The elementary level is very difficult. Mm -hmm. They need they need the socialization. They miss their classmates. They they need the teacher to kind of guide them. And it's difficult on the computer. And I've watched her, uh, and it's difficult. It's not it's not the success that you'd like to see them have with the in person. So um, you know that's that's a concern. I want to see us start to get back to normal. I know we have to do it safely. 
Um, but I think we can start to open up more things and do it safely. I get the uh, hospital reports daily, um, New Jersey Hospital Association. Um, there's about 800 people in the hospitals throughout the state. Mm -hmm. um, they're not all in ICU units. That's total hospital population that are COVID tested positive. Now they could be in for heart failure or kidney failure, but they might have tested positive on COVID, so that would be a secondary diagnosis. So figures a little misleading. Interestingly, the central part of the state is probably the lowest part in the state looking at the numbers. So originally we had an increase in September, early October. We're now down. Uh, North Jersey is high. South Jersey is higher than us, and we're, we're kind of in the middle. So it seems to be, in talking with the, the hospitals, the treatments have changed. Uh, they found that there were, um, you were getting, uh, you know, blockages in the brain and in the uh, lungs. So they've gone to uh, anticoagulant therapy to break up the clots. Uh, they do proning, they move the patient, they rotate the patient in the bed. Uh, they're using vitamin D, vitamin C, they're using the remdesivir. So uh, the treatment regimen has changed, and I think the rate of fatality has come down. So. What do Tom's, I want to hit back on the, the business standpoint, what are some of the, the small businesses and the restaurants and in Tom's River, what can they do, you know, here in the fourth quarter of 2020 and then even in 2021 to... And, and they've been creative so far. I mean, I've, I've seen all sorts of stories and all sorts of pictures and stuff from different restaurants and businesses kind of getting creative here on the fly to, to bring in more revenue, to find ways to have more seating available at, at different restaurants and, you know, providing masks and different signs and everything. How can these, these businesses that uh, run by residents... Um, for you know their livelihood, you know how they make money for themselves to pay their own bills and everything. How do they try to survive here, given the current circumstances and and the restrictions from the state? It's that's been a challenge, and you're right. The restaurant tours have gotten very innovative. I've seen some tents now. As we get into the winter season, um, you may have to look at insulated tents, which are different than the tents we're seeing now. Also, you're going to have four sides up, so you're going to have to have um, emergency lighting you're gonna have to have exit lighting you can't use the the heaters that have the heat coming from the top you have to use a blower that's located outside of the tent so that results in uh, in electrical issues you've got to now plug that in and again to heat a tent it's not as um, as insulated as your house or the normal restaurant so you're going to wind up with uh, having a difficulty in keeping that warm throughout the throughout the winter season uh, I'm hopeful that as the vaccines come in, that we'll see an increase maybe to 50%. I know there are places in Pennsylvania that are up to 50%. Um, and I think, you know, that will help. Uh, it's it's going to be difficult until we can get back to some sense of normalcy. I'm, I'm hoping that the vaccine will help us out. We'll start to see some normalcy. I'm hoping that there'll be a, a uh, antiviral, which will be specific for this uh, disease and and will allow people that if they contract the disease, it'll be a short course and they'll be protected. Um, so again, there's a lot of variables that are out there that we don't know what's going to happen. I'm hoping that the governor will allow us to increase some of that to maybe a 50% seating, and that will help. The, the tents, I think, are going to be difficult as the winter comes. Uh, that may become cost prohibitive. I don't know what an insulated tent would cost. I've seen them in the military. They're very good. Um, but, uh, again, they're a lot more costly than the tents we see up now for the summer season. And you won't be able to have the openings. Everything will have to be closed because of the weather. So it'll be a challenge. It'll be a challenge. Heading into 2021, uh, are you and the, the, the administration, the council, kind of looking ahead to what could have to be done in terms of the budget next year and not, not as much this year because of some of the... Uh, the business is losing revenue and some of the businesses being closed and everything that's happened because of COVID. Um, do you see any challenges ahead in for, for next year in terms of the budget or, or anything else going on around Tom's River? Well, it's, it, you're correct. It's going to be a challenge. Um, our CFO, Alex Davison, has been monitoring the situation. Um, I also get reports from the tax collector 
Um, surprisingly, the tax revenues have not. We we thought at first that the that the August quarter we might see a downtick because that's when COVID really t hit, um, and uh, so far the tax collections have have held fairly steady. Um, we've had some pleasant surprises. Our golf course is doing remarkably well. Uh, that's up, but then on the other hand, the Winding River Ice Rink was shut down for a long period of time. Mm. That's back in operation now, so uh, you know that we're hoping they're going to balance one another out. Uh, we've been monitoring that. We've also taken some aggressive steps um, in looking at um, our confidential employees. We've reduced that number by uh, almost uh, 20 percent, and that savings over the first half of the year is probably about a million dollars plus. Uh, we anticipate more as we move forward into the new year. Uh, as you know, the council authorized a, uh, an efficiency study, so when that mm -hmm. report comes out, there, we may see some savings there, things that we might outsource, uh, you know, areas where um, if we have retirements, we might need to consolidate positions and maybe not need to backfill somebody. So we look at that constantly. Our, our personnel department is very conscious of that and looking at as people retire, Okay, do we need that position? Can it be merged with another position? Can we do a part-timer in that position to, to fill it? So um, we're, we're looking at everything when it comes to uh, trying to be as conservative as we can. Is it too early to per even try to predict a ta any kind of taxes going up for residents? I, I think it would be, I think it's a little premature. Okay. Um, you know, we had a tax increase last year. We hadn't had one in the previous three years. Mm -hmm. If you average the tax increase out over the four-year period, it was about a penny. Uh, and that's just kind of keeping pace with inflation. But um, going forward next year, uh, Alex Davison is getting the information from the department heads now. He's formulating the early budget. And we should have some idea early January we'll start talking about it, massaging and seeing where we're going. Uh, as I said, I'm hopeful that with some of the um, some of the reductions we've done in force, some of the uh, issues that'll be addressed with the efficiency study, that we'll see some cost savings there, uh, and it'll, it'll be able to mitigate any increased expenses that we're having coming up. Now, be, because of this year, I mean, there, I know there's been the, been the redevelopment plan in, um, in progress for the last couple of years or so, including. Uh, the, the crime-ridden hotel that was knocked down a couple years ago, and, and the stats, and you can look back up on our website, the Chief Little game a couple years ago were just amazing with how many different times they had to get there within a, a limited time span and how many different kinds of arrests they made. And I think people are more, more grateful for the, the parking area that's there, uh, having more parking in downtown. But uh, there's, there was a few things, I think, that have been discussed or proposed for um, you know, redeveloping the downtown part of Times River, all across Times River to, you know, make it more of a, that kind of year-round destination yes. for tourists and residents. Jersey Shore and outside the Jersey Shore alike. So um, has the pandemic slowed things down or is, and what else is being discussed for, to, to follow along that path of redeveloping Times River? It, it has slowed the process down somewhat. Um, Capadagli Group is the one that, uh, that we selected, we put on an RFP. They were the only ones that responded. Uh, right now, we're looking at the site. Um, we're interested in where the old uh, red carpet inn was, and that parking lot that's across from the post office, uh, toward where the red carpet inn is. Uh, they have a proposal. It's still in the early stages. Uh, it's they went before the DEP. The DEP required certain changes to their plan, which they made. It has. It has uh, changed in design. Um, we ha I have a mayor's advisory council made up of some business leaders and uh, prominent citizens in town, the bid, um, that will also look at it. So it's going to go through a number of iterations. The land use committee of the council will probably look at it first. Once they bless it, it'll go before the mayor's advisory council. Uh, there'll be a public hearing on it. Uh, in the meantime, it would you know, it would still go before the planning board for comments from the residents. Uh, there's going to be parking. Adequate parking will be on the first couple of levels, um, and then the apartments will be above that. So any apartments that, that are uh, built, uh, the parking will be built into that uh, requirement. So it won't be a burden on the parking that we have. They'll, they'll keep the parking we have plus the additional parking for their, their spots. 
Um, they also uh, are interested in the Robbins uh, Street area um, off across from Water Street. Okay. There's, some, there's a proposal there. Um, they would put a parking deck that would connect to our parking deck and um, a restaurant, catering, catering hall. Those are very preliminary stages. Uh, but uh, we're, their demographics seem to indicate they're very interested in proceeding. They feel they're going to get um, get you know the rentals, um, the Legion Square over in front of Tom's River South. Uh, I was surprised that rented out in less than a year. Wow! Um, and it's fully rented and rented. And when I talked to some of the restaurant owners, they noticed an uptick in business from the people who are living. In the apartments, they'll come there for dinner at night during the week. Excellent, excellent. Whereas normally the downtown area was doing a lot of a daily business and then weekend, but uh, they're seeing an uptick in the evening business from just from the residents at Legion Square. So we're optimistic that that's going to uh, take place, and we think it'll be uh, it'll increase the number of residents downtown, which hopefully will lead to more restaurants. We'd like to see, you know, liquor licenses down there. Maybe uh, we're looking at there's a proposal that the bid sent that um, you can have a joint liquor license with several restaurants located in a similar area. It's a state legislation, and I think it's working its way through. It's been proposed, so the bid is supporting that. And I took to Mirren the other day. She's going to send me information on it. So um, that would be nice if you could have a couple of little pubs and some small restaurants. I think it would be a boon downtown, plus boutique stores. You know, we, we've we seen the migration from the downtown section to the malls. Now the malls are experiencing a problem because of internet shopping. But people still, now they're starting to go back to the small towns. You know, the Red Banks, the Asbury Parks, mm -hmm. the Point Pleasants, right, the Manasquan. Right. So we feel we can fit into that model nicely. I want to get your thoughts uh, on the Toms River School District, it's certainly some that predates the pandemic. Uh, ongoing for the last couple of years with the S2 school funding formula, making cuts. Uh, the school board, the superintendent, and the superintendent's office have, you know, made cuts and different furloughs and, and, and everything, and trying to to save stuff. And I talked to Councilman Turnbach about the Times River Education Foundation, and that is underway and trying to help raise funds to keep extracurricular activities in place in the school. So. The Toms River community has certainly gotten together in trips to Trent and, and in Toms River and trying to save the school district and keep staff, keep jobs, keep students with in, in terms of sports and activities and everything. So what what has been your take on everything that's happened because of the state cuts to the, the school district? Well, the, the cuts seem a little bit draconian. Um, Tom's River is a, one of the larger suburban districts. We've got three high schools, three intermediate schools, 12 elementary schools that feed into that. Um, we've got 15,500 students. Uh, it's a very, by any measure, it's a very large district. Uh, the problem is the state aid that we get doesn't, in my mind, doesn't marry up with what our pop student population is. Um, I've looked at Camden and Trenton, which mm -hmm. are both large cities. Camden has about 10,000 students. Um, Trenton has about 12,000, which are less than what we have. They both get more in state aid than the entire Toms River Regional Budget, which I can't wrap my hands around. I mean, they're, right, the right. education cost per student in Toms River is about 17,500 were the latest figures I think I saw. Meanwhile, in Camden and Trenton, it's in excess of $30,000, $35,000 per student. Um, and and I can't I can't justify the big change in per pupil cost. Teacher costs are the same. Supplies are the same. Building costs are the same. Um, and and why we only get let's say fifty six million. We were at sixty three million. I think we're down to fifty six. It's probably even less than that now. Uh, when Camden was getting two hundred and eighty two million dollars. And Trenton's getting in the neighborhood of 254 million. The entire Times River Regional budget's about 245 million. So uh, I can't, I can't wrap my head around how that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. um, I, we've nobody, to my knowledge, has ever seen the S2 formula. There's a lawsuit to try to expose that. So right. we can look at the right. numbers. Um, I know that was the superintendent's uh, issue. Uh, and the business administrator of the school district is that they they've never seen this this formula 
Um, and the, a lot of the figures that they inputted on the Tom's River side were inaccurate, and the state admitted it. Uh, but in any case, if you just look at it on a, on a state aid basis, you would you would be hard pressed to say why is Tom's River only getting mid fifties when they have more students, almost one and a half times the students of Camden and Trenton, when they're getting more than the entire Tom's River regional budget. So it it just fails to meet any test of logic as far as I'm concerned. Um, does Tom's River want? the whole 245 million funded no but I think there should be some kind of an adequate uh, funding below which you know you don't cut the, the district um, it seemed pretty draconian to take from 63 to mid I mean you're taking 10 million dollars out of a uh, you take it almost you know 15 percent of the school 15 to 20 percent of the school aid that you're giving to a district you're mm -hmm. taking it away that's difficult to replace particularly when you're under mandatory ceilings on what you can raise a school tax you know you can't raise it to um, to make up for the delta so you know so you you're left with cutting staff cutting activities which it all feeds into the a well-rounded student you know you you have athletics you have uh, theatrical activities you have artistic band mm -hmm. uh, uh, right. clubs that you need that all go to forming a well-rounded student it's not just what you learn in the classroom it's a lot what goes on in extracurricular activities uh, that help to fully develop an individual's potential. One thing that students and everybody else around Times River certainly enjoys around this time of year is the, the Halloween parade. It's you know, one of the biggest out there and uh, unfortunately because of COVID and everything it's, it's not going to happen in 2020 but trick-or-treating is still going to happen on October 31st um, for a few hours uh, between mid-afternoon and early evening. So uh, what, are, what are some of the things that parents and kids need to know in Tom's River for trick-or-treating on Halloween? Well, a couple of things that we've put out on our website. The, the time will be from 2 to 8 um, on Saturday afternoon. We're asking residents, if they do not want to participate, mm -hmm. to post a, a sign on the door, tape it to your door, saying that due to COVID concerns, you won't be participating this year. Uh, if you're going to participate, we ask them to put the porch lights on or a pole light on. Now I realize during the day it might be difficult to see, but if you right, see a right. if you see a lit pole light, you know, okay, we can knock on that door. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also asking that the children wear masks, uh, social distance if you're going out with a group. If you're with your brothers or your sisters, obviously you can be a little closer. But if you're going with your neighbors, try to distance the groups. Mm -hmm. um, you know, bring hand sanitizer with you so that if you pick up candy, you can want, you can use the hand sanitizer on your can right, on your hands right. as you move to the next um, to the next house. Uh, we we felt we didn't want to cancel it. We wanted some sense of normalcy uh, for the children. As I said, the school is abnormal this year, so this um, you know this will give the children some sense of okay, you know this is kind of like Halloween. <laughs> you know, it's not exactly, <laughs> but it's uh, it's as close as we can get in this pandemic. Uh, a lot of places, a lot of organizations are doing uh, trunk or treats, mm -hmm. um, where they're you know they're either a church group or uh, athletic teams are having a trunk or treat where they'll go to their field and you pop the trunk and put the the candy in there. So we have a couple of options around town. Uh, you're right, the parade, which everyone looks forward to, is uh, was canceled. Again, as most parades have been canceled in large right. gatherings, mm -hmm. so uh, you know we don't have much control over that. Um, as again, as I said, I'm hopeful going forward into the new year that we'll have vaccines available. Uh, the game plan, I think, is to to start with healthcare workers, those at most at risk, right. and the mm -hmm. uh, populations that you know over 65 with underlying medical conditions, and then it'll gradually roll out to the the rest of the public. Um, and again, I'm hoping that you know we find drugs that will allow people to have the symptoms treated if they do come down with the disease, so that they're comfortable mm -hmm. and that they can recover. So there's a lot, you know, we're hopeful for. Uh, you know, this country is very innovative. Um, I mean, this, you know, most vaccines take years to develop. This they jumped on pretty quick. There's a couple of companies working on it. They're in, as you know, phase three of these tests. Mm -hmm. Uh, so far, knock wood, they've been positive results. 
um, and uh, we're hopeful that something will be available to the public in the near future. I'll close up with this. Uh, you know, we've certainly talked about some of the positives and negatives, you know, because of COVID and everything else, and then something to look forward to, certainly with the redevelopment plan and everything. But um, what is, I mean, and you've been, a, obviously, you were a councilman before you became the mayor here, but what is it about being in Tom's River, being the mayor of Tom's River, or, or you know, prior to being a councilman in Tom's River, about this Tom's River community that that you like doing, that you like coming to work every day and, and serving the people and being a part of the residents and everything? I think I think it's the people and you, and you, you know, we have outstanding citizens. And I'll point to the uh, pop the trunk food deliveries we have on Friday. We mm -hmm. started that on Good Friday. Uh, we had five sites originally. We had uh, City School, we had Walnut, we had uh, uh, East Dover, uh, we had the Third Avenue parking lot, and we also had Tom's River South Elementary School to cover the Tom's River Regional District. Um, we did that through June, and then in June we transitioned to, as people started to go back to work, we consolidated at the uh, Presbyterian Church, and we were doing that every Friday from 11.30 from a 11.30 to 12.30, okay. or 11 to 12.30. Mm. Um, I will tell you that uh, Fulfill has been a wonderful partner with this. They provided all the food. We also have, we get um, vegetables and groceries uh, from local um, areas that have delivered to us, bread. Um, we have a, a variety of food. We're going to be working with Fulfill to deliver turkeys. They're going to give us 600 turkeys wow. uh, the week of Thanksgiving, week before Thanksgiving. Um, and, and it was impressive to see the people turn out to help and volunteer at these different functions. Um, I also like uh, coming to work here, uh, and, and it's it's very rewarding when I get an email from a resident about an issue, and I can forward it to the proper our business administrator and the the department head and get a resolution for that. We've had a number of emails about you know my street needs to be repaved. Well, we we go through the process and we find out okay it's in next year's paving project, so you're able to kind of check the box off. And I think that, you know, the local government is very responsive. The, far, the further you go up the food chain, the less responsive the government becomes. Uh, the county's more responsive. When you get to the state level, as we can see with state aid, not so much. And, uh, you, know, we're, you know, we're the Jersey Shore. We're below the Raritan River, and sometimes we feel like we're <laughs> the stepchild to North Jersey. Uh, but, you know, the local government, the nice thing about it is that you can respond to local issues and, and get some resolution and satisfaction for the patients. We can't, can't unfortunately, can't satisfy everybody, but um, it's rewarding when you can receive a, a, an issue, address it, get it taken care of, get back to the resident. Uh, it's nice to be able to complete the loop. Mayor, thanks for having me here at Town Hall today, and thanks for taking out some time Thank to you. discuss everything going on in Tom's River here in 2020 and some things that we could look forward to keep our fingers crossed for 2021. I appreciate it, and I, let's hope we get a – I don't want a redo of 2020, but no, let's, no. let's hope 2021 <laughs> is a lot more positive, okay? Thank you very much, Vin. It was nice talking with you and with your listeners. Uh, if you have any questions, you can give me a call here at Town Hall. Uh, my email is mhill at tomsrivertownship.com. Um, I do read all my emails daily, and uh, and I will forward them on to the appropriate department heads for resolution and our business administrator. So I appreciate it. And uh, the residents and businesses, I'm sure, appreciate that as well. And certainly I appreciate um, your efforts and everything as well. So thank you again, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> Make sure you download the 92.7 WOBM mobile app along with the 94.3 The Point app, Beach Radio 104.1 FM, and the 105.7 The Hawk app. And subscribe to the 92.7 WOBM YouTube channel where you can see all the Ask the Mayor episodes as well as Ask the Chief and other news events covering the Jersey Shore. For Tom's River Township Mayor Maurice Moe Hill, I'm Vin Ebenu. And thank you for watching another episode of Town Square Media, Jersey Shores, Ask the Mayor.